everyone, welcome to 2C40 Gaming. I'm T Lindsay B, and if you are subbed, welcome back. I'll see you guys in the comments. Well, I have another load order for you guys. This time, we're doing 50 mods specifically for Fallout 4 on Xbox, base game only, no DLC, okay? So, this is a casual load order with great FPS and the world NPCs, they look amazing. I wanted to create just a really general load order with some must-have mods that you can build upon and upgrade to whatever role play you want. So there's a lot of versatility with this load order, lots of versatility, but the FPS is really good. The load order is stable. I'm really digging it and I wanted to share it with all of you. So let me know what you think about it in the comments and if you have any questions. Okay, so the first thing you guys will probably notice is that at the top of this load order, I do not have Fallout's unofficial patch. Well, we don't really need it. It never really need it unless a mod requires it. But in this case, the unofficial patch needs DLC. So since we're only covering the base game, we won't be able to use the unofficial patch anyway. It won't load without DLC. So if you are using Game of the Year, or you do have all of the DLC loaded, you can use the unofficial patch if you'd like. As I said, some mods may require it. Many do not require it. They simply require you have certain DLC to use those mods. The armor weapons keyword community resource. This is a master file that when downloaded will go to the top of your load order. It is simply a framework required for many weapons and armor mods. If you don't have this, you may not be able to utilize those mods. So if you are downloading weapons and armor mods, well, it would be useful to have this in your load order. A master file, like I said, that will automatically go where it needs to go in your load order when you download it. Next, we have USO base game there is a DLC option here. So, but we're just using the base game of USO. What this does is it unlocks a numerous settlement objects for settlement building. So you have access to a lot more uh, useful objects and materials if you plan on doing settlement building. So this is a pretty moderate load order for settlement building. It's not really heavy on that but at least a little bit of settlement building in this load order, right? Just in case. It even lets you add buildable NPCs to your settlements. It adds custom retextures for walls, floors, and other components. There's rugs and other furniture pieces that is added by USO, and it adds various building and customization tools for you. So much more extensive than the vanilla settlement building. Next, we have all settlements extended. What this will do is it'll just expand the borders around all of the settlements so that you can build further out. So, so this mod just expands the settlement cells and the borders around the settlement. So you can go much further out scrapping trees or building more things, I guess, just to make your settlement space bigger. You're not as limited as you are with vanilla. We have global stash, connect all workbenches. What this will allow you to do is basically connect, make a network of all of your workbenches and settlements that you possess and all of the resources in those workbenches can be available wherever you are. So if you have a lot of stuff to use for building at one settlement and then you start a new settlement and don't really have much to utilize, you can go right into your pit boy and connect those workbenches and immediately have access to basically everything you have at every settlement where you are. So it's extremely useful. And like I said, no matter what role play you decide to use or what features you decide to add on to this load order, these are just really useful mods that are going to help you out. So next we have functional sanctuary bridge. 
So whether you plan on doing a lot of settlement building or not, Sanctuary is the first place you're probably going to go in the game. And the bridge is pretty tore up and riggedy. So this just fixes uh, the bridge. There are no nav mesh issues, so it's going to be really easy for NPCs uh, to cross back and forth. No issue. And it just makes it look nice, like, you know, it's pretty much been reconstructed. All so, map markers for fast travel. This will make pretty much every location in the base game available for you to fast travel to right off the bat. There's also a version with no fast travel. So that way when you do travel to new locations, you'll actually get the XP for it. With this version, you won't get any XP because the locations have already pretty much been discovered. But it Next we have better and cleaner remade perks. This just edits our perk tree, reformatting it, making it a little bit nicer to look, look at. As it says, it's just better and cleaner. It's more of a personal taste type thing. You don't really need it in this load order, but it is useful. We are trying to make as much, we're, we're trying to make as many improvements as possible basically. The next mod is by Flashy Joer. It's called Advanced Needs. This is a bundle mod that does quite a few things. But mostly what it does is it brings some 76 features into Fallout 4. This mod adds a camping system. You can place a fast travel capable campsite with a stash box linked to your settlements. There are stealthy takedowns, allows you to sneak up on enemies and silently dispatch them. A headshot system increases all headshot damage for everyone and adds helmet damage reduction system for the player only. A settler dialogue system, talking to random settlers can now result in recruiting them. And a number of other changes including the ability to create MREs at chem stations. Subversion, the institute and railroad this is going to allow you more role-playing options as far as deciding the outcome for different factions at the end of the main missions. For example, you can spare the railroad. You can convince Father to replace Elder Maxon with a synth instead of destroying the Pridwin. Or even convince Desdemona that taking over the Institute is better than destroying it. You can reform the institute once you become the director, etc. and so forth. 10 times experience points allows you to earn 10 times more experience every time you get EXP in the game in comparison to vanilla so that you get OP significantly faster. Merchants now have 10,000 caps for trading and your companions will have infinite ammo. No negative affinity, accelerated affinity will allow you to level up with your companions much quicker and get their respective perks. With negative affinity, they will not dislike any actions you take in the world, so you can progress with their relationships faster. Boston Less Enemies removes 75 NPCs from the Boston downtown area to improve the FPS. Realistic Sound XB1 adds additional reverberation effect to about 50% of the game's sounds. You will notice better gun sound echo in the distance. Sound now bounces off objects better and more realistically enhances immersion in almost every way when it comes to sound. Fallout 4 AI Overhaul will make NPCs in the game move about the world more naturally and realistically as if they have a mind of their own. This is not a combat AI overhaul. NACX Light. This is our weather mod. This is our lighting mod. This is our camera mod. This does some significant things to improve the appearance and the immersion in the world. It adds 10 original rat storms with special events, unique weather effects and events, cloud shadows, 
new radiations, rain splash, volumetric mist, real nights with built-in control for luminosity with from pitch black to very bright, advanced climate control, exclusive camera effects, exclusive dynamic interior relighting, change the third person camera in game skin shaders and this is also your water mod water has been redone for a better look to go with NACX lighting a really cool feature is that if your player character is wearing sunglasses you will be able to see the world as if you were wearing shades such as dark sunglasses making the world appear dimmer the next two mods are environment mods. Springtime trees and spring in the Commonwealth, as they state in the description, both work very well together. This will make our world more green and lush. The trees and the grass will be denser and more colorful with vibrant flowers and other things to make the new world post-war look a lot more alive. Ultimate Jetpack Ring. This is a ring that will allow us to fly and soar high into the sky without the need for a jetpack on power armor. This is a ring located at the Red Rocket truck stop just outside of Sanctuary in a lunch pail inside of the garage. Dogs Not Brahmin turns all of the Brahmin with caravans into dogs so that those caravanners take up considerably less space. And sometimes those Brahmin being large get stuck in places and it's kind of annoying. Our next group of mods we're pretty much just giving an overhaul to the NPCs in the world so that they look significantly better than Vanilla. We have Sense Revamped. This will give a new face, body, eyes, mouth, etc. to Sense, brand new textures, giving them a fresh look. Ponytail Hairstyles by Azar, A-Z-A-R, is a mod that is required by some other mods that overhaul NPCs, female NPCs anyway, but your player character can use these hairstyles as well, male or female. Caliente's Beautiful Bodies Enhancer Curvy Edition is what we're going to use to change the bodies of our female characters in the game, including your own player character. Classy Chassis Replacer Outfitters. This, this particular mod is going to change all of the female outfits in the game to reflect Caliente's beautiful curvy bodies. These two mods go together. Classy Chassis must be after CBBE. Busty will make, well, female characters more busty. Clean Faces of Settlers does just that. Your settlers will not have dirty, grimy faces anymore. Companion and NPC's Face Replacer will change the faces of many named and unnamed NPCs in the world. There's a long list in the description of these changes. If for some reason you don't like the particular new look of a certain NPC, you can find their individual mod and just place them below this one. So we're going to go with Loving Kate, Loving Curie, and Piper Makeover. We have Immersive Mouth and Teeth, which gives us 1K textures, 16 times that of Vanilla. Immersive Face Animations, which affects all the characters in the world, making their facial expressions a lot more lively and engaged. The eyes of beauty will make the eyes of NPCs look more realistic and natural. This is not the original eyes of beauty, but the SHJ version, which also includes ghouls. So your player character as well can have eyes like ghouls. Realistic death animations will 
just make impact in the game whether it's by bullet or melee just seem more realistic and less cartoonish um, for example death claws won't toss you around like a tennis ball as it says in the description to go with that we have realistic ragdoll force to complement it now we have more real life physics so for example when we die we will die in well not us but you know our enemies will go down in a much more believable way Unique Uniques turns over 30 unique weapons in the game uh, to unique textures, unique designs, and functions. For example, there will be new effects for the silver submachine gun in Deliverer. UCO base game goes with AWKCR, the first mod in this load order. This does a number of things under notable features in the description. It says it will upgrade all clothes, armor hats, helmets, bandanas, and glasses with ballistic weave and linings. You can now layer pieces of clothing and armor that you could not in vanilla. You can swap colors, decals. You can take legendary effects off of one item and put it on another, and you can craft things that you know right off the bat at the start of the game that you could not craft in vanilla like alien and synth costumes and a number of other features this is a clothing overhaul mod and for our factions starting with the railroad we're going to replace their armor with bell protectorate now, Bell Protectorate is kind of a tactical modern warfare type, you know, military gear. We're going to give that to the railroad. Now, how it works is if you download a Bell Protectorate or one of the Bell Protectorates, all you need to do is find the faction that goes with that mod and you will change that particular faction to that gear. So we're gonna go with the railroad for belt protector it. For the Minutemen, we're gonna use militarized Minutemen. There are quite a few of these mods out there. Just pick which uniforms and gear you prefer. This is the green version, I believe. Imperial Brotherhood of Steel, not too many details as to what this does in the description. I'm sure there's more information on the Nexus, but this does overhaul the Brotherhood of Steel, at least their appearance and uh, I guess abilities wise. Um, I have run the game with this and I do know they have slightly different looking power armor and they have some other new gear as well. For the Gunners, we're going to use Gunner Armor Expansion. This is going to put new gunner militia headgear, outfits, gloves, backpacks, and other pieces of armor into the game that you and your companions can wear. And it will also overhaul the gunner faction with this new gear. At the start of the game, you can make this gear at a chemistry station and you won't need any materials to do so. It will be readily available and it's pretty strong gear. Wasteland Clothing Overhaul is going to completely retexture most of the vanilla clothing items in a game. This does require CBBE curvy bodies, which we are using. And in the description is a list of all of the overhauled clothes and under armors. And you can also craft these new outfits at chemistry stations if you have the perks and materials to do so. Holstered Weapons by Azar, A-Z-A-R, is going to add different holsters to the game. Hip holsters, thigh, rifle, and shotgun holsters and backpacks which you can craft at chemistry workstations. 
if you don't have the materials or the perks to craft these holsters, there is a salesperson in Concord just outside of Sanctuary that will be there day and night to sell you these items. English Full Dialogue is a dialogue interface completely redone from vanilla. Noun dialogue is in a list form. The main difference is that unlike in vanilla where all of your dialogue and responses were paraphrased, you will be able to read word for word exactly what your player is going to say so that you know better which option you would like to choose. Insignificant object remover is going to help slightly improve our FPS in the game by removing things in the environment that we cannot see, such as pebbles and twigs, kelp and underwater rocks, fake grass, etc. Amazing follower tweaks will allow us to have multiple followers in the game, I believe up to 30. You'll also be able to modify your followers in a number of different ways, including editing their combat AI, summoning them from wherever they are, or locating them, and making a number of other changes to your followers in a menu in your pit boy, even when they are not following you. SKK Fast Start New Game is my choice for quick start so that I can skip the long opening sequence of the game. This will start you in your sanctuary home pre-war. You'll build your character, name your character, and then as soon as you're done, you will be transported to exiting Vault 111 in Sanctuary, and that'll be that. P, our last mod here, is going to allow you to scrap your settlements completely with very few limitations. Unlike Scrap That Settlement, or STS, the most famous, is this mod will allow you to scrap buildings. So, for example, in Sanctuary, you will be able to scrap all of the houses and get a clean slate and start completely anew. And that's that. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Until next time, everybody, happy gaming.